Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Luke and I do perfume reviews. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Give this video a like and leave a comment if you wish to. I love reading your comments and I always respond. In today's video, I'm talking about vintage warm and spicy scents that I've been using a lot recently. I did a similar video back in September but I'll try not to discuss those perfumes in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's start with the big guns, shall we? Let's bring out the big guns. This is Cinnabar from Estee Lauder, and this is a new acquisition of mine. This is one of those grand spicy orientals from the 1970s and the 80s. Cinnabar came out in 1978, and it was allegedly created because Mrs. Lauder, when she witnessed the success of opium and similar Eastern-inspired fragrances, she decided it was about time to jump on the Oriental trend. According to the Estee Lauder website, Estee Lauder herself had always been fascinated with the mystery and opulence of the Orient. In 1978, she decided the time was right for an Eastern-influenced fragrance, Cinnabar marked the beginning of a worldwide wave of exotic amber fragrances. She also said that Cinnabar is a fragrance that fulfills every woman's yearning for the exotic and mysterious. Its rich amber notes provide a lingering warmth and sensu sensuousness. There's one other thing that isn't mentioned on the website. Cinnabar was initially released as Youth Dew Soft or Soft Youth Dew, so a softer, more wearable version of their classic Youth Dew from the 1950s, which was incredibly popular in the late 70s. And I have to agree, Cinnabar bears a striking resemblance to Youth Dew, but it's also a unique scent. The mustiness and the muskiness of Youth Dew were replaced by the sweet peach and the zesty orange accord, which makes Cinnabar a bit more uplifting, although it's still a heavy oriental scent. The perfumers behind it were Bernard Chon and Josephine Catapanon. Bernard Chon is responsible for creating a bunch of other classics from Estée Lauder, namely Estée, Azuré, Alliage and Beautiful. He also created Halston Classic, the classic Aramis, as well as Cabochard and Aromatics Elixir for Clinique. Needless to say, all of these perfumes have in some way changed the course of perfume history and have become legendary. Josephine Catapanon, she also created several iconic fragrances. She created the infamous Yves Chou from the 1950s for Estée Lauder, as well as Fiji for Guy La Roche. In 1978, she and Bernard Chon joined forces to create a modernised version of Yves Chou, which was obviously Cinnabar. So some sources say that soft Yves Chou had already been created in 1977, while Cinnabar wasn't released until 1978, so exactly one year later. And it's not entirely clear whether both of them, or just Catapano, worked on Soft Youth Dew in 1977. It's also not entirely clear whether Soft Youth Dew was ever released as a standalone perfume, or just a flanker of Youth Dew. So the creation of Cinnabar is shrouded in a veil of mystery, which is, in my opinion, fitting, because the fragrance itself is supposed to evoke that mystery of the Orient and fulfil the yearning for the exotic, as Mrs. Lauder put it herself. I've always enjoyed the big and bold, spicy Orientals from the 1970s and 80s. I own Chanel Coco, Estee Lauder Youth Dew, and even a decant of opium. I became interested in Cinnabar when a very kind subscriber of mine recommended it to me. I was familiar with it before, but I was convinced that I didn't like the new version because I didn't love it when I tried it at the Estee Lauder counter. But that was more than two years ago, so I decided to give it another try. And let me tell you, 
I absolutely love it. Cinnabar is an opulent vintage perfume. Okay, let's look at the main notes and accords. The old version has more notes listed on Fragrantica than the new version, but I'll try to put both note breakdowns on the screen because I believe the note breakdown for the newer version is incomplete. So the notes are jasmine, orange flower, tangerine, clove, muguet, which, which is lily of the valley, lily, olibanum, sandalwood and patchouli. I can definitely smell a sweet peach note as well. And there's also lots of cinnamon. And there must be at least one smoky resin or incense because the base is very ambery, smoky and sweet. I can also smell something animalic in the dry down which isn't listed. The peach and the tangerine make it fruity while the cinnamon and the cloves make it spicy. And I wouldn't say it's a floral scent, even though I can pick up just a hint of that white lily, but this is by no means a floral fragrance, at least not on my skin. Once that sweet peachy opening goes away, and once the lily goes away, you're left with the spicy ambery base, which stays on you all day long. It's not quite as beast mode as the older version, but it's still very powerful in the opening. I think I put just two sprays on my arm the other day and I could smell it all day long. Cinnabar is the sort of fragrance that you spray on and you never forget about it because it keeps reminding you of its presence. So the performance is, incredi is incredible despite the fact that it was reformulated and rebottled. I generally tend to like everything from Estee Lauder's so-called House of Lauder collection of their timeless classic perfumes, which has been out for about 10 years, I believe. The bottles all look the same. Some others that I like include Estee, Spellbound and Intuition. And I would really like to try Azuri and Alliage, which are both old school green earthy sheep scents. Cinnabar is also quite old fashioned but it's more likeable and, dare I say, modern than its predecessor, Yuvju. And I know people often call these perfumes old lady perfumes, and I don't agree with that because I think they're still great classics that can be appreciated by anyone. Many niche perfume houses will release something similar to Cinnabar or Yuvju or Opium, put it in a fancy bottle and maybe charge £300 for it. And some reviewers and some niche perfume snobs will be raving about it and calling it the most unique scent ever. So to sum up, Cinnabar is a very loud, vintage style, spicy oriental scent in the same vein as Estee Lauder Yuvju, but it was initially created as a softer version of Yuvju. However, it's significantly sweeter and more fruity than Yuvju, in my opinion. It's an absolute spice bomb of a fragrance. The cinnamon is the star of the show. It's a heady, spicy scent that turns powdery, resinous, sweet, balsamic and ambery as it dries down. It almost smells boozy at times. I just love Cinnabar and I hope this review made it justice. I also wanted to mention, but I forgot that this smells a bit like Coca-Cola, especially in the dry down. It's that sweet, boozy, balsamic, ambery, spicy, resinous dry down that sort of smells like Coca-Cola. And I get the same thing from Yuvchu. And lots of other people describe it as Coca-Cola too, so I'm not making it up. So I think Cinnabar deserves to get more love and recognition in the perfume community because it's a classic timeless scent and I just hope they never reformulate it again because this version smells amazing to my nose and I think we have to move on because I've been talking about Cinnabar for almost 10 minutes. Next up we've got Chanel Coco, the original Coco from Chanel from 1984 and I tend to talk about Coco a lot on my channel but I think it deserves to be talk about, talked about 
because it's such a gorgeous fragrance. It's classic and elegant. I love wearing it year round, but it really shines in the autumn and winter. Unlike cinnabar, opium and other grand orientals of the 1970s and 80s, cocoa is not a typical representative of the genre. It's still a spicy, ambery oriental perfume, but it's much more floral. The floral heart is really prominent. The main floral note is the rose, in my opinion, and it's the rose that sets it apart that makes it unique. Cocoa is elegance in a bottle. It smells like a million dollars. Cocoa is une soirée à l'opéra, so opera evening, a fabulous night at the opera in Paris, gold jewellery, fur coats, you know, that sort of thing. I find it incredibly classy and elegant, definitely more than Chanel Number no. 5, but that's just my opinion. If you love Chanel Number no. 5, that's okay, I love it too, but I'm not the biggest fan of the Eau de Parfum. I really like the Eau de Toilette and the Pure Perfume, I also really enjoy that one. But let's return to Coco. As for the notes, I mostly pick up the peach, cloves, vanilla, rose, amber, as well as patchouli. The florals are prominent in the opening, but the base is ambery, spicy and oriental. Coco is also slightly, but really ever so slightly, animalic. Coco is a vintage scent, but it's not dated. I find it very likeable because it's sweet, ambery and powdery. This is a vintage scent for the vintage hater because it still smells modern enough to be appreciated by someone who isn't into vintage orientals and who just wants something elegant maybe for special occasions. And I know for a fact that a lot of ladies on YouTube who don't have any vintage fragrances in their collections. Some of them have cocoa and they just use it for formal and special occasions because it's that sort of fragrance. My choice of concentration is the EDT, just because I'm used to it and I prefer it to the EDP, which is stunning nonetheless. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose. They both smell like cocoa. They're both unmistakably cocoa even in their newest formulations, which tend to be just a tad fresher and brighter and more floral compared to the vintage versions that I tried or had. So modern cocoa doesn't smell exactly like it used to, but it's still the same fragrance. And I suppose one could say that cocoa had a facelift at one point. So it's been slightly modernised, but it's still strong, long-lasting, and it still smells great, in my opinion. Next up, we've got Dolce Vita from the House of Dior. This fragrance was created in 1994 by Pierre Bourdon and Maurice Roger. It's a 90s style spicy peach scent with a woody base. It's a soft, warm and comforting scent. You get this sweet, creamy peach note, lots of cinnamon, some nondescript florals woody notes and some vanilla. The notes are kind of similar to the notes of cinnabar, but Dolce Vita is an entirely different scent. Cinnabar is a spice bomb from the 70s, while Dolce Vita is a 90s style fragrance. It's quite unique and I, I don't have anything in my collection that smells similar to Dolce Vita. Sometimes it reminds me of Lancôme Trésor, but they're only similar in style, they're not similar scents. Trésor is a powdery rose and peach scent, while Dolce Vita is a sweet oriental, but not a heavy one. Even though it doesn't perform poorly, it's not a heavy oriental. It's soft and comforting, and it's not a heady, spicy scent like cinnabar or yuvchu. It's not a spice bomb. It's a strong scent, but it's not a spice bomb. So Dolce Vita is, as I said, a sweet oriental, and the name is very fitting. It's the scent of living la Dolce Vita, the sweet life. 
And as I said in my review of Dolce Vita, which you should check out, by the way, if you wish to, Dolce Vita, for me, evokes both Christmas time and summertime. It's Christmassy because of the spices, and it's summery, sunny, and joyful because of its overall vibe. And I think there's also a coconut note in this composition. And I have to say, the more I wear it, the more I smell the coconut in this, which makes me really happy because I really like the note of coconut, but I don't like it done in a sickly sweet way. I, pref I prefer my coconut to stay coconutty, not sickly sweet. Dolce Vita is a happy scent. It's super nostalgic for me and it brings back so many memories. The performance is above average as long as you acquire a vintage bottle. The new bottle, the, I mean the new version, smells very alcoholic on my skin and it has absolutely no projection, which is such a shame because I love the scent and I'm really sad it's technically not available anymore because I, I refuse to purchase the newest version because it's too expensive and it just doesn't perform and doesn't last on me. So I'm glad I managed to acquire this vintage bottle from eBay. I didn't overpay it. I was waiting for a good deal a very long time. And if you want to purchase a vintage bottle of any fragrance, patience is the key. As long as you're patient, a good deal on a fragrance that you want might pop up out of the blue when you least expect it and you'll be able to buy it. And it always happens to me. I have lots of vintage fragrances on my wish list and I always find them eventually. Sometimes it takes more than a year, but eventually I always find them. So we've come to the end of this video. Let me know what your favorite spicy, ambery, oriental vintage fragrances are. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in one of my next videos. Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays if you celebrate. Bye!